Hey everybody, today I'm here to talk about thumb training again. And uh, if you haven't seen my video, How I Train My Thumbs, I made it a year and change ago. Go check that out. Everything in that video is still valid. But my understanding of the thumb and its functions in arm wrestling has evolved and so has my training. And especially in the last few weeks, I made uh, a couple of changes that all of a sudden I've had marked improvements in the size and strength of my thumb that I haven't seen in maybe a couple of years, okay? I've been training my thumbs for about three and a half years, and most of the growth that I saw was right at the beginning, the first couple of months. I saw very rapid changes in the size of like the adductor pollicis area and the feeners, but it kind of leveled off after that. And when I started training, I was doing like four different exercises, but over the long, you know, the long slog since then, I've basically done my thumb training with one, the one main exercise that I show in that video. Um, things that I'm doing today are not that different, but they do have a little bit of nuance built into them. And I think the way that I'm doing it is better. And if you're able to see a rapid change in the size or strength of something after years of training it, it means you're probably doing something right. You're hitting it with a new stress. And it's something that I wish I hadn't been neglecting. Uh, what spurred all of this was, as I kind of stopped doing my arm wrestling training altogether, uh, the closest thing that I'm doing, I mean, I'm doing some basic workouts and stuff that I haven't done in a long time, but I've been doing a lot of pinch grip and thick bar work, okay? Because I want to develop my hand musculature regardless of whether um, I'm competing in arm wrestling or not. I want to develop my hand musculature again because I used to really like doing pinch grip. Um, unlike with straight grippers, which I was kind of talented at to begin with, my pinch grip was really mediocre. And I always liked the idea of being able to pinch a pair of 45s together. That's a world-class... Uh, feet and grip strength. That means that you have really, really strong muscles in your hands and your thumbs. And for somebody with small hands like me, narrow pinches, you're not so disadvantaged compared to somebody that has really big hands. So it appealed to me. So even though my starting point wasn't nearly as high as it, as it was with something like uh, crushing grip or riser or whatever, it was really exciting to me to be able to do that. So other than that, spurring the change, I also noticed when I went down to Florida to pull with Brad uh, that his thumbs are humongous, but not everywhere. I mean, they're, they're big everywhere, but what really stood out to me was the difference in size along the bottom of the thumb close to the wrist, all right? And I realized that I had not been giving very much emphasis to the muscles in here, okay? If you look at the, the muscles that surround the thumb, there are like five different muscles that pull the thumb towards the, the center of the palm, okay? There's a, a couple triangular ones that kind of pull it this way, and then there are a couple more like lumbrical shaped ones, longer thin ones, and then there's the opponent's pollicis, which is right there along the bottom, and that tends to drag the thumb towards basically the bottom of the center of the hand, all right? So like that. And when I was gripping up with Brad, I noticed that when he would pronounce his thumb this way, the, the, that bottom part made me have to reach so much further around and I couldn't get anywhere near the back of his hand with my fingers because that area from here to there was just so thick. And I thought, I've been training my thumbs for years and compared to most people, my thumbs are pretty developed, but it's mostly in this area where it's all bunched up, but not so much around the back and the uh, the bottom, which makes a big impact on your opponent's ability to grip, all right? So I noticed that and I decided I have to look at how I'm training my thumbs and correct some things. And hopefully I'll start to see some hypertrophy again and that's happened, okay? So I'll describe my routine here and I'll show you how I do it from my point of view. Um, well, I'll, I'll just start with pinch grip. Um, and thick bar stuff. I, I'm doing like rows with fat grips, okay? Nothing fancy there. I'm just doing like regular bodybuilding rep ranges. And it's hard because my hands are failing at, uh, you know, relatively light weights compared to what I rode. I mean, if I put on straps, I'm rowing 315 barbells, but like I, I struggle to do more than, uh, you know, more than like 200 pounds for reps with a pair of fat grips on the barbells. Um, but I basically only do that, uh, like once a week, but twice a week I've been doing, um, plate pinches or pinch blocks. It just depends on whether I want to go to the gym or if I'm at home, cause I don't have any flat plates. I'm going to buy some, but I don't have any flat plates yet. So I'll do, uh, basically isometric holds with these, uh, these pinch blocks or these plates and kind of how I structure that is I'll warm up with, if I'm using a pair of 25s, for example, I'll warm up and 
and hold them with both hands because it's really easy and I can do 30, 60 second holds, do a couple, you know, I'll pump the, uh, the plates a couple of times in my hands to, just to create a little bit of movement, just to get my hands warmed up. And sometimes I'll alternate, you know, I'll grip left and right and left and right. So I'm doing reps where I'll go a right hand rep, then a left hand rep. Um, but the real meat and potatoes of it is the isometric holds. And then I'll do, you know, four or five holds for sub-maximal time. And whatever the last hold is, I'll generally go to failure on that last hold. And that's, you know, that's good for the hand musculature. And obviously the thumbs oppose uh, the fingers. So your thumb musculature has to be developed in order to oppose the, the four fingers on the opposite side. Okay, so that's the, the first thing that I'll do when I do this. Then I'll move on. Generally, I'll do uh, next, I'll do the uh, wrist wrench hand exercise that I showed uh, in a video a couple, um, maybe like a month ago, month and a half ago, uh, optimizing your hand training. I do, I do something like that because I want to pump the rest of the muscles in the hand as, as much as I can, but then I move on to the thumbs, okay? And with the thumbs, I'm not really using a strap and weights anymore. I used to do it like that. I would take a belt and I'd dangle weights, but I found that it made it a little bit difficult to orient myself. And part of the issue is uh, you're so much stronger with your thumb in this position than you are with it in the extended position that anything that you're doing that's really effective, you can get yourself stuck when, when your thumb is extended. But we know that when you're doing uh, full range of motion, it's that lengthened part of the full range of motion that causes the most hypertrophy stimulus. So lengthened partials will actually matter more than like, you know, getting a really good pump in this range. When you have the muscles fully stretched out, that's when you get the greatest growth stimulus. That's when I feel the most pain. That's when I get the most pumped uh, when I do that. And then I, then I flood afterwards. So I started doing this with bands. And the reason I'm doing it with bands uh, is because I can do a concentric part of the rep with the band a little bit further away, not so extended, uh, so it's not so tight. And I can pull within a locked position so that the resistance is higher. And then I'll do the negative where the resistance is higher, where I'm doing more damage up here. And uh, that higher stress in the negative cycle and ultimately until I reach the stretched position uh, causes that growth stimulus to be the best. And oh, I'm not going to be able to do the concentric portion up here. So I relax the uh, relax the band until I can do it. And I just go back and forth doing that. And it's led to um, great results. And I'm not just doing a single exercise either. I'm actually doing three different, <laughs> three different band exercises for my thumbs. And uh, I'll go ahead and show you that here. First thing, sorry about the weird angle. I think it's important to show you guys exactly how I do this so that you understand how these movements and how their differences hit the different structures in the thumb. Um, this is the best that I can do. I don't have like a GoPro or anything, so I just set up my uh, my phone here on my table and I faced it towards my tower. Um, I like to put the band at a lower angle than my hand height. Uh, I like to imagine just kind of coming up when I do this. It's a little bit easier for me to shape my hand and forearm to fit this. The first thing that I'll do is I'll supinate fully, and I am working on this opponent's pollicis area. One, because it's a kind of a weakness of mine compared to the rest of the thumb, but also because when I do the other thumb exercises, I'm kind of moving from this side to that. So this doesn't really impact that. But I found that when I blow up the rest of my thumb, uh, it gets so engorged that it's a little bit difficult to do this. Okay, so... Um, <sighs> I start by trying to trying to kind of make a four, you know, with my, my hand, but I'm not going across the palm, okay? So I'm not going across the palm or going towards my fingers. I'm actually trying to go as far towards the camera as possible, towards the center of the bottom of my hand, this way, okay? And I'm driving the thumb down and in, okay? It's here. You can, you can see when I flex my thumb, this is all bunched up and hard, but this area down here is really quite soft. But when I do that, the area is all of a sudden quite hard because I'm using that muscle a lot more. And how I used to train my thumbs, I would do a lot of this and I'd leave that muscle without a whole lot of stimulation, okay? So the first thing that I'll do is I'll just try to work without moving the band too much. I'll try to work in a basically a static position, concentric, eccentric, 
and I make sure I get a really full stretch, all right? I can't move my thumb any further back than that because it's that that part of the range of motion that matters the most. And you can see, you can see that the thumb is, ah, you can see that it's really working. And again, I'm not going across the palm like this. I'm not doing this kind of crap. I am trying to work it in here. As I start to tire, I'll do the concentric portion here. I'll do the eccentric there. And I make sure that is a slow eccentric, okay? I'm really stretching out the thumb muscles. So there's a lot of give and take. Don't be afraid to turn your hand a little bit to make sure that you get a good squeeze and a good stretch. And that's a set and my thumb's starting to get pumped here. Usually the second set is where the pump will get really crazy. Um, but the first set is usually just enough to beat up the thumb a little bit, start to get it tired so that when I get to the next set, this really starts to blow up and this dynamic motion starts to matter a lot more because you're gonna be more fatigued, which means you have to give more in order to get that concentric portion back, okay? So, I'll try to keep the rep range in the like the 15 to 30. Uh, 30 is a little bit light for me. If I'm getting to 30 reps, it means that I probably didn't try hard enough. <laughs> But we, we, you know, anybody who really pays attention to like bodybuilding and stuff knows that as long as you're hitting real failure, anywhere from five to 30 reps is approximately equal for hypertrophy. And I do strength a little bit separately, like I said, with the pinch blocks, or if I were doing pronation stuff, which I'm not right now, but if I were, I'd be hitting plenty of that uh, intensity and I don't have to worry so much about it. So this is really just for hypertrophy. I'm basically targeting 15 to 20 reps most of the time, okay? So concentric, nice and tight, eccentric, stretch, concentric. I do the whole eccentric while I'm at the highest tension and then I let the pressure off. I do the whole eccentric while I'm at the top and then I let the pressure off, okay? I don't let the band go completely limp unless I have to. I wanna maintain constant tension on the muscles, all right? So if I were all the way out here and there was no tension, uh, you can do that if you need to in order to lock your thumb back into place but you should be able to continue to do this. And I'm just trying to draw my thumb as much like this as possible, okay? Not across the hand, but towards the camera, okay? Towards the bottom of the center of my hand, all right? And when that's all blown up, I'll do that maybe three or four sets like that, and then I switch, okay? And how I switch is I'll turn my hand so that what with this belt still, or the, the band still well lower on the thumb, I'll start to go across the palm, okay? And I don't even just go across the palm, but I actually think bury the tip of my thumb into my palm like this, because that, that, helps, that helps my thumb know that it needs to go across and not just, not just bend this in. I'm trying to tuck this between my fingers, and that really hits all of these muscles. So this one's already pretty blown up. That hits all of these, all right? Same concept, I'll do the full eccentric in the top position. I'll re relax as much as I need to in order to get the concentric again. Yeah. A little bit of motion with the hand if necessary to get the stretch, but that's basically what I do, okay? I'll do maybe you know another three sets like that. Same concept, 15 to 20 reps is ideal. Um, you can go a little bit higher as long as you're getting to appropriate failure before 30. Um, so those are the, the, the first two. And then the third one that I'll do is a lot less important and it's not that easy, but basically I'll do like for key pinch. Um, and maybe this is a bad angle to show it, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, I actually try to put the band higher than my thumb. Okay. And I'll have some ulnar deviation action going on here. Okay. And, I, and this is just to, to try to cue myself to drive my thumb down towards my index finger and not to let my index finger come up. I actually want these muscles, there are two, uh, two muscles on this side of the thumb in this adductor area. I want those to be doing the work, okay? And I don't want it to go towards the uh, tip of my index finger, I want it to go towards the knuckle, all right? And I'll do the exact same type of thing, all right? I'll, I'll go down with it, 
and when I reach the maximum tension, that's where I'll do the eccentric and I'll give with it as much as I need to in order to be able to do the concentric portion again. Right now it's fairly fresh, so I can do it at a pretty, <clears throat> pretty good set of tightness. I try to make sure I get a very full stretch. It's easy with this position because the thumb locks out there, all right? And I'm doing all of that, okay? Okay, so those were the three exercises that I do with a band in order to hit as much of this thumb musculature as I can. I only did a little bit and you probably can see that my my left thumb is pumped more than my right. The left thumb's always a little bigger, but right now it's uh, it's a little pumped. It's not as pumped as it'll be when I'm doing a hard workout and then, then it'll really blow up. It gets kind of silly. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. I do thick bar stuff um, when I'm doing rows and sometimes some pull downs. Uh, but on a different day, I'm doing, you know, doing pinch blocks or uh, plate pinches. And then I move into this dynamic thumb and dynamic hand flexion stuff that I've showed you before. So that's how I've been training my thumbs. I've noticed a, a meaningful difference in the development here along the bottom ever since I started uh, my workouts with this, you know, this angle, this opponent's polysis one, which was the first one that I showed you with the bands. And, uh... Yeah, so who, who knows what the future is going to hold with arm wrestling or grip or whatever, but I promise you, if I can see a difference at this point in my training, you guys can absolutely do it too, and hopefully everybody will just have jacked thumbs in the future, and it'll be really great for the sport. So that's it, guys. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.